If you want more power, better vision, and a bulletproof mindset, then I would like to welcome you to CG Plus, Complete Games Online Player Development Center. Now, baseball and softball players of all ages and skill levels can access a multimedia experience providing education and instruction on your personal mobile platform. Rob Cruz has put together an online video portal, a remote hitting program, as well as a series of online hitting courses boasting a curriculum that features pitch recognition strategies, power, video analysis, mental skills, and then some. For more info, log on to www.cg.plus. That's www.cg.plus to find out how you can complete your game today. Welcome to the Transcending Sport Podcast with Rob Cruz, an audio experience bringing you interviews, conversations and more from some of the most intriguing personalities in the sports world. And now, your host, Rob Cruz. All right. Yeah. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Transcending Sport Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Cruz, my guest is Jen Dujets. She is the CEO and founder of Mental Performance Trainer by Jennifer and Inspire You Fitness. We're gonna get down to the nitty gritty today and we're gonna talk all things mental human performance. Jen, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Glad to have you. So, I'm trying to figure out where we begin. Well, I, well, I, well let's start with, with, with me introducing you to the audience. Okay. Normally, um, when I have a guest on for the first time, I like to introduce the, 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 the guest, like, who are you, where are you from, how'd you start, how'd you get into it? So, um, how'd, how'd, you, how'd you start? I mean, how'd, how'd, you, yeah, how'd, yeah, how'd, you, how'd you get into mental performance uh, training? Mental performance training? Yeah. yeah, so I think um, it was always in me. You know, I grew up in um, a very athletic uh, mm -hmm. family, military-based mm -hmm. background, my father mm -hmm. um, and family members. Um, I was always an athlete growing up. I was excessively overweight as an athlete. Mm -hmm. um, so I lost over like 100 pounds in that journey of being a, a student athlete. And I think that's what like kind of dipped me into the whole personal fitness training. Mm -hmm. You know, so when I got into personal fitness training, then I got certified in that. And then I opened up my business doing, you know, fitness training for athletes. Um, and then the mental game, just, I think they just bleed together, you know, yep. they coincide with each other. Um, and then from there, you know, I had my children both very, you know, involved in sports, you know, my younger daughter plays division one soccer and my other daughter is in the military right now. Um, both very active and involved in, you know, athletics. Um, you know, that being said, I went for my younger daughter. Um, she struggled a lot with performance anxiety, a mm -hmm. lot, like so mm -hmm. much so that, you know, she was having panic attacks on the field and, you know, we were putting her on inhalers. We thought she had asthma, like sports induced asthma, you know, and to get like, I guess, to the bottom line of it, you know, we went to go talk to somebody and there was nobody really in the industry that was close to where we live that could help her. Um, and, you know, I, thinking back, like looking back at your question, you know, I, when I went to college, I studied psychology and mm. exercise science, and then mm. I was a sign language interpreter for the deaf. So just presenting and performing, you know, as a sign language interpreter, there was a lot of like performance anxiety. There was a lot of like, you know, you know, doubting yourself and, mm. you know, second guessing, you know, your work in the industry. So I really tapped into a lot of that. And I think that on top of my children being into sports, um, and I think me being overweight, you know, really hitting hard with the discipline and the mindset to want mm. more and better for yourself. Yeah. Um, that's kind of like bled me into the industry. Um, I would say my children is what put me there, you know, just because I felt the need was so strong and there mm -hmm. wasn't enough, you know, help in the industry for these athletes who were struggling. So, so I think it was just, mm -hmm. yeah. So what I was going to say is, um, how, how, you know, you, you, you dealt with it in your own life, like as a, as an mm -hmm. athlete yourself, 
Yes. Um, also, goal. also as a performer yourself, uh, even in, mm-hmm. even in, even in the industry you're in, and then you 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 were able to to help your your own children navigate it. And, yes. and I think that's where a lot of you know, but people who do anything, you, most people who are who are, who are athletic, athletic trainers and things like that, and going to um, exercise science, yeah. had injuries, <laughs> sympathize uh-huh. or, or emphasize with people with injuries. So that, that, yeah. that their, their passion was kind of birthed from that, and I, I found that interesting. But I also want to ask you, um, how did you, wh- wh- how do you feel, or what is the reason? A lot of athletes suffer from underperforming mentally, and and and, and 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 that's a broad, obviously that's a broad, yeah, thing. And why do athletes feel the need to not want to get help? What is the hmm. what is the issue with? Um, and I have my own, like I, I've been through it, and I, I knew yeah. why I didn't want to get get help. But I'm curious to know from your perspective, and I'm happy to share my perspective if, if, if necessary. But what what is sure. what, what is what is what is it with with, with athletes rejecting you know, or or just not wanting it, not wanting help? Yeah, no, I totally. That's a great question. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, and I think it's kind of like a, a. I don't really think it's an easy way to answer that. I think mm-hmm. the number one reasons why athletes struggle, in my opinion, yeah. is because they have a tendency to be hyper focused on expectations rather than just execution of their sport. Hmm. You know, they tend to focus so much on the, you know, external world, like what people are thinking of their performance and, you know, what people's opinions are and, you know, what, you know, am I holding up? Am I enough? Am I the best? And I honestly think that um, the label of like a sports psychologist, I, I feel that that makes them feel like there's something wrong with them. Um, and there's not, you know, mental yeah. performance training, in my opinion, I tell the kids as soon as they sit down, I am not going to dip into your past and figure out why you have <laughs> lower confidence on the mm-hmm. field. Mm-hmm. I am not a sports psychologist. I am a mental performance coach. See nail, hit nail. Let's get to the problem. Let's give you a tool and let's put you back out on that field or court feeling more confident. Soon as you tell them that, whoosh shoulders drop, you know, and I think that this industry is getting more awareness now where they feel like it's okay to go chat with somebody because the mental game they're saying is way much more important than the physical game. And quite honestly, 100% the truth, 100% the truth. So, so in, I think, yeah. In my, in my, and I'm going to just throw you a couple of alley-oops here. Um, sure. In my, I'm 25 years in and, and doing this and what I do. <laughs> Right. And um, so I've seen anything that you can see. I've seen it multiple times. Right. Um, and, and I think the, 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 the recurring theme that I'm witnessing is athletes who are presented with options mm-hmm. for mental health help or performance, mental performance help. Mm hmm normally aren't able to connect with the said person that was prescri- that was prescribed to them or, yeah. or or presented to them. So like for example, a lot of my college students aren't comfortable going to someone from the university. Yeah. You know, or the the, the person that they were given may have the proper credentials Mm-hmm. Because they took the courses and they have the certifications and they have the degrees and they have the masters and the doctors doctorates, but mm-hmm. they don't even like this person. They don't want to be in the room with this person. They don't want to. This person is yeah. annoying, you know. And when we met, we met. You were the first person that I had ever heard anybody ever say, <laughs> "Oh my God, I love her," and she oh, was able to help her. me, and, and I was able to connect with her. And I think connecting with the person helping you in anything, mm-hmm. whether it's teachers or professors or hitting coaches, pitching coaches. Um, right. is, is probably the number one thing. What, what would, why are you, able, why are you able to, what's the, what's the, I mean, you don't got to give away your secrets, but I mean, what, 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 what is, why, why are you able to connect mm-hmm. and what are some of the reasons why others may not be able to connect and, and how significant is connectivity and being able to connect with, uh, with, with, with the athlete? 
It's 100 percent. You have to be able to bring a certain energy to your sessions Mm -hmm. in order to reach and connect with your athletes. I always people ask me all the time, like, is Zoom still okay? Yes, Zoom is absolutely okay with my athletes. It's a different energy, but I'll get you there. You know, Mm -hmm. Um, connecting with somebody and having the ability to relate to them and having them be okay with not always having to be okay makes them feel okay, if Mm -hmm. that makes sense, you know? Mm -hmm. And just like allowing them the opportunity to just drop their shoulders. No, I always tell them this is a judgment-free zone no matter what you bring here is between you and I, unless it's clinical based, I need to bring in somebody else into our team. You know, like if there's anything clinical going on, like cutting themselves or eating disorders, those are clinical based issues. We just bring somebody else into our team. But I just allow these kids to feel comfortable in the environment that they're in and that nothing is off the table. Mm -hmm. You want to bring something here that's bothering with you, boom, bring it. You know, I feel also too, when I get them into my studio, the first thing I do is make them move. I throw them on the treadmill. We talk on the treadmill. Sometimes I'll have the younger kids bounce on a trampoline while we talk. Mm -hmm. We break the ice, not that face to face, you know, intimidating like eye contact. I'm the least intimidating person ever, but like, (laughs) just know that like, I got you no matter what, you know? So I just try to bring really positive energy Mm -hmm. and let them know no matter what they're going through, I have a tool, a strategy, and you are going to start to connect to this program right away and start to feel better and more in control of your sport out of the gate. And they do. And I think they believe me and they trust me with the things that I'm teaching them. So do do you find that, um, different athletes that you work with mm-hmm. and I'm assuming you work with with both genders or all genders yes. right um, yes. uh, do you find that different athletes that you work with have may or may not have different preferences on whether they want whether they prefer like a, a, a female or a male uh, mental mm-hmm. performance coach or because I know I probably would I probably would want be more comfortable talking to a female I'm a male, but I, I, I'd probably be more comfortable talking to a female mental health performance coach because I just right. that's just how I am, right? Right. Um, but in my own personal therapy, I'm more comfortable talking to a male. You know what I mean? Right. Yep. Um, yep. And, or, and do you find some athletes maybe more comfortable not talking in person? Because, um, and yeah. not talking on camera. Like I, I, yeah. Some people wouldn't want to be on Zoom but they'd rather be yep. in person. Some people would rather text. I, I know that there's a lot of services out here now that you get to pick what you're comfortable with because they want to kind of like, I can open up easier by texting because that's literally the communication of choice for our younger generation where they're comfortable. I'm behind right. text and I can I can open up better that way. Like, Do you find that or is that something that you, in your experience, what do you, yeah. Never, never not. I mean, I don't even know how many athletes I've worked, 900, I don't know, like uh, hundreds of athletes and never one has anybody made a gender reference to me. Mm -hmm. I also think that like I bust around male, female, kids, Mm -hmm. older Mm -hmm. athletes, like Mm -hmm. I tease with them and I try to like get them to like open up on a funnier, I have kids. So Mm -hmm. I get that Mm -hmm. they might be a little uncomfortable in the Mm -hmm. beginning. Mm-hmm. Not everybody is comfortable. No, mm-hmm. you can tell too which athletes are there because their parents are making them go versus the ones that truly want to be there. I could spot that as they walk in the door, their body language, their energy, the way they look at me, the way they sit down. Mm-hmm. And I'll ask them right out of the gate, like your mom making you come here. Are you here because you want to get get better? And they laugh and I'm like, come on, like, give it to me. Like, yeah, is your parents yeah, making you come? Yeah, Cause if yeah, they are, yeah. like, Hey, mm-hmm. let's chat about it. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, and then I'll just walk them through the program. Mm-hmm. But I don't, mm-hmm. I've never had a gender question or reference or even a father or, or mother ever say anything to me about that. Interesting question. I don't know. I don't have the answer for yeah, that. Yeah, I, I think I think the, the players may not admit yeah. or maybe even know that that's would be would be something that they would, they would want or need uh, or respond yeah. to differently. Or feel I, more but, comfortable. You know, I, 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 you know, I, I know. People are just different. I, that's why I asked the question. I was wondering if you if you even thought of thought of, or considered that. So my next question would be, um, when you and I know you work with parents, mm-hmm. and in my opinion, a lot of parents yeah. have either have have contributed 
in some way, form, or fashion, whether consciously or unconsciously, to their own child's issues, or co- or may have compounded it. And, and that's just me observing. I don't have. I'm just not what I do. I'm not in psychology, but and a lot of times I have to I have to know a little bit about it to be able to be a good at what I do. And I yes. I see when I when I meet certain players that are struggling with certain things, and then I meet their parents to see how the interaction goes. I'm like, okay, now I now I can I can I can draw a a, a, a conclusion as to why. Where the pressure the, is coming where, from, yeah. Uh, and where the problem is, it, you know, it, where, where, you know, just in, in this particular uh, student athlete's approach to yes. overcoming adversity, for example, or dealing with failure mm-hmm. and things like that. So what are some of the strategies, if you could pick maybe like the top two, to give me like the top three, if that's not too many, things uh, that, that, that uh-huh. you've seen, um, that are like really, really common, commonplace mm-hmm. with, with, with how parents can be a detriment to the mental health and mental performance of a, of a, of a young athlete. Yeah. Um, there's <laughs> just three, just three. All right. The top three, maybe, or, or the most common three that you, that you see. Yeah. The most common. Yeah. The top three things are the word choices and the body language and the the uh, matter of fact behind their words when they speak about their child to me about their struggles. And often I'll challenge it and say to the athlete, is this accurate? You know, is, are, is this accurate? And some of them will be like, sometimes or what have you. Um, the big question I ask athletes are, are your parents in the stands? At your games, yes. When you make an error or mistake, you know, during competition, do you look over at them and are they a trigger for you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Many say yes. So right there and then I say, how do you know? How do you know that they're upset with the way that you're performing? Oh, you can just tell, you know, Mm -hmm. by the way what they're saying and the da 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 da. And I go, their body language is their body language showing you that they are not happy with your performance or that they're disappointed or they feel that you could be doing better. Yes. So I usually, with that, will send a quick text and say, with all due respect, I just want you to know this is what we're working on. This is the topic that we're working on today. Our triggers, you know, what flares up that performance anxiety and what makes the confidence drop. You know, I, you know, I know every parent has their best intention, but I just want to bring awareness to you that when your son or daughter makes an error during competition, just try to be a little bit more mindful of your body language because when they look to you they're looking for it to, for it to be okay that they messed mm-hmm. up and when they see your body language or the flaring arms or the facial expressions mm-hmm. of dismay or disappointment that is a massive trigger for your you know for your child and so, they feel mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. no i'm sorry so yeah. so awareness so you're mm-hmm. the one tool awareness let that parent know that, that they possibly their body language and words are a trigger for their athlete for their son or daughter. Now, before you um, go to the next one, I want to just I want to uh, comment on what you said for the first one. Yeah, what's that? I, I don't always go to the competitions, mm-hmm. but when I do, mm-hmm. and sometimes I may have two players on one team playing against two or three players on another team, and I know so I have players on both sides. Yes. So I usually go by and say hello to the parents, let them know I'm here. Hi, how you doing? How's it going? But I can tell when I walk in mm-hmm. by the all the parents' body language on either side of the field, which teams are winning <laughs> yep. and which teams are losing. Mm-hmm. And you could also tell who the pitcher's parents are. God, yes. Because the pitcher's Absolutely. parents have a whole nother level of just... Yep. <laughs> things to worry about or, or more concern or pressure, right? Okay, that's the picture. That's definitely the pitcher's parents right there, right? That's, Absolutely. You know, that's the dad over there. That's the dad over there. That's the mom over there. I can tell those are the, those are the pitcher's parents. But, you know, and, and, and it... Their ears. <laughs> yeah, they, they just, they have a different... They, their sta- ears. they have they, an exhale for 10 seconds. Yeah. They stand yeah. out differently than the other ones, right? And then when I'm in my, my, my sessions, my training sessions, mm-hmm. the players that are continuously looking at over at their parents after mm-hmm. each swing. And I can understand a seven-year-old doing that. A hundred percent. That's understandable. But I, mm-hmm. it's not understandable for me to, for a 16-year-old to do that. Mm-hmm. And I bring it up. I address it. 
have to. If, and, and I have one player. I said, if you look over at your mom and dad one more time, <laughs> we're done. Yeah. And, and and the parents tried to leave the room. Mm-hmm. I said, no, 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 don't leave the room. Because are you at the games? You don't leave the game. Yeah. Please stay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it became an unconscious impulse. She's mm-hmm. like, I didn't look. I didn't look. Everybody, said, you just look. Everybody saw you look. She didn't even yeah. realize it was such an <laughs> unconscious, like breathing, like at their swing. I'm like, it's part of their. You habit just routine. looked. You, no, I did it. I, you just looked. You just looked over there. No, I didn't. Like, oh my god, this is crazy. So, yeah. so you know, those are the things that you know we, we can break that up. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I don't know other than yelling at her. I don't know what else to tell her. I don't know. Breathe. Stop looking. Go like this. Yeah. <laughs> but um, you play for yourself or your parents, you know, remind them, remind them why they play their sport, you know, for that emotion that we're all looking for in life, right? To feel good, to feel lit up, you know, you play for yourself, you know, and, um, you know, a lot of times too, I'll challenge the parents, like my second goal, I would say to them, like, just... I always like to give them the Oreo. Like if the parent has to say something to their child because they just can't not, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always tell them to do the best they can to like not say anything unless it's positive. But I said, if you if you are that parent or that child asks you and truly wants their your feedback, use the Oreo effect. A positive thing that happened in the game, one thing that they can work on and end off on a positive. Mm-hmm. Because... They're going to, the kids are going to ask their parents for their feedback. It just, they do. They want to know. They want to please them. So the parents just to be, need to be hyper mindful of their words affect their children. Now, and now let me ask you this. Okay. And that's great. I, oh, I love this. So you got, you got the, you got, and I'm, I'm just going to say this. Okay. And this is, this is, this is totally, maybe it's anecdotal. Maybe it's not. But. But if I put every single softball dad, mm-hmm. baseball dad, in a room together, <laughs> yes, of the success, my most successful players, yes, who have gone the furthest and played at the highest levels, if I put all uh-huh. those players, fathers in a room. Mm-hmm. It's the same guy. I'm gonna agree with you. It's the same guy. It's it it's borderline mm-hmm. abusive almost. It's teetering on the line of I love mm-hmm. my child. Of course they love their daughters, but mm-hmm. I I gotta put and 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 so so it's like how do you push? Is there a way? Are there strategies? And this is this is these these are, <laughs> and these are some of the things that the, the reason why we're gonna be working together is because I'm getting so <laughs> fired up. Like, no, this is this is this is this is. But here's the other part. I'm going to say this. And then later on in my life, I realized that some of these moms uh-huh. are just as bad uh-huh. slash good as the dads. Uh-huh. They just do it differently. Uh-huh. They just they're, do it differently. They're, they're, they're it's, it's really, it's, oh my God, it is. And, yeah. and, and so, so I can identify certain situations uh-huh. like, hey, that kid's going to make it. And I already know why, because the support system is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. Not yes. better or worse. It's different. Mm-hmm. And it's just the type of environment that is going to foster success if she stays mm-hmm. with it and if she continues to work. And she's going to work because yeah. I, I, know, I know the personalities of the, of, the, of, the, of the mom and the dad. And there's a certain, they'll drive mm-hmm. two and a half hours. I got people that drive two and a half hours, literally, yes. from South Jersey. And I got people who make up an excuse why they can't drive 20 minutes. They're not going to make it. <laughs> it's so true. Yes. You, you know what I mean? So two hours one way to come do in-person mental performance coaching. And I will tell you too, also by my phone and with the parent, the moms that like break down in anguish because they just can't see their perfectionist son or daughter perform the way... And I just don't know how to help and support them. You you also know in those first few minutes of, you know, finding out a little bit more about their, their you know, their child's uh, mm-hmm. history 
or what their struggles are. You can hear the tone of their voice. You know, I have parents that break down on the phone, you know, and tell me, please, like, I just, it's breaking my heart to see them so hard on themselves. Usually if they're hard on themselves during their sport, they're typically hard on themselves in the classroom. They're hard on themselves in, in life. You know, that's where a little bit of my life coach counseling comes in on top of the mental performance training, because these kids just need to realize you don't need to be perfect today. Mm -hmm. You're 15 years old. Your goal in life, whether you're playing your sport or whether you're out there living the world, is your goal in life is to just be a little bit better tomorrow than where you are today. What is that going to look like when you're 20? Mm -hmm. What is that going to look like when you're 25? Mm -hmm. What is that going to look like when you're 30? You know, and I often, you know, just give them that piece of awareness that like that perfectionism, when you take that weighted vest off that heaviness, your game just starts to be so much lighter and your mental game starts to all click, you know, and I tell the parents like, I know that parents, um, I believe in my heart that parents have their child's best intention. I of do course, believe that. Of course. I, but I, what I believe is they are completely not aware of their body language, their energy, their word choices, and their facial grammar when they are saying certain things to their children. So if I could blast one thing out for parents is just like be mindful or watch other parents reactions to other people's children and realize that it's you have to self you have to have some of that self-reflection you know you have to catch yourself because so, words are damaging words are damaging so let me say this yeah um and by the do, way do, do, i agree do, with do, 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 with what with it, it's it's not just the father or the mother. Oh no, no, it's both. It's yeah. definitely, definitely, it's definitely, um, definitely both. Definitely. Um, so, <laughs> I I coached my son in baseball. Yes. Right. And I have this thing about what I call daddy ball. Yep. <laughs> yep. Because right? um, it's not just a father that coach that's coaching the team that his son or his daughter is mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. um, it's not just it's not just about that it's the it's the inability of the said parent to be impartial yes um, unconsciously mm -hmm. so when I coach my son because I, I'm in this field mm -hmm. and I see it all the time I purposely didn't put him at short when he should have been at short because mm -hmm. I didn't want people to say, mm -hmm. and I purposely didn't bat him second or, th second or he wasn't a three hitter, but I purposely didn't bat him one, two, because mm -hmm. I didn't want people to say. Yep. So it was like, everybody was like, you should, why are you so much harder on them than everybody else? Because if mm -hmm. I'm not, they're going to say it's daddy ball. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, in, I'm in the sports business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I have a question. Yes. I have a question. For you. If you could do it all over again, would you still have been his coach? Yes. Because the other people that would have coached him were not qualified. That's the only reason why okay. I did it. Okay. Because I tried that. I, a, I tried to not coach him. I tried. I was like, hell no. These people yeah. don't even know what the hell they're doing. So I was like, I no, I'm, not, I'm, I'm done. So I, I, I started. That's the reason why I did it. I coached right. because I wanted him that to get – that, that's the only reason why – well, that's the only reason I think I did it. So right. I, I guess what I'm at – so what, I, what, I, what I'm going with this is um, – is on the daddy ball in – the, in the daddy ball – and I, I, I have air quotes for people who are listening by, by, by audio. <laughs> I have air quotes. In the daddy ball tradition or the daddy ball, what is the best way – Cause it's got to be hard for the yeah. player on the team who mm -hmm. has to ride home with the dad who's the, it's got to be hard i don't even know what that's like and uh, me and my uh, son we, me and my son we talk about it me and my son my son and i we talk about it now and, and like i i i i, <laughs> I could tell you some stories oh my god i, I wasn't good <laughs> i was tough I, I, I looking back on it i definitely was way tougher than him on him yeah because i'm like you can't make errors 
Because, dude, I got. I have to bench you. That's right. I have I to bench you. Me. Like, I have to bench you. <laughs> I'm not going to be the guy who has his kid on the field who sucks. Yeah, I know. That's like, so you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I'm in this business. This is what I do. Like, yeah. so I, so I guess I, I think parents, to, parents feel like they failed sometimes. They mm -hmm. feel like it's them failing. When the kid strikes out, parents feel like I struck out. <laughs> like yeah. I struck out. I know. I you know, know what I mean? Like, it's so. A it's a problem, Rob. It's such a problem. Okay. So here's my advice yeah. on this. Yeah. Things. One, if you're going to coach your child, you have to have at least one or two assistants, assistant coaches on the team. And they have to be the people who are disciplining and giving critique and giving feedback during competition, during practices, during why? Because children need to learn from different voices. They're going to tune you out anyway, Rob. They're going to tune you out. Anyway. So, so like, if you, if a daddy ball parent, like they, I feel like if there's something that your child needs to learn, I would give that feedback to an assistant coach for them to approach, you know, that child so they can hear it from a different voice. They're going to process it differently and they're not going to feel like they're letting their parent down, you know? Um, and the second thing is if you're going to coach your child 24 hour rule, you do not talk about the game for 24 hours until the, everything dies down because people say things that they don't mean when they're, you know, when they're mm -hmm. anxious or when they're mm -hmm. angry or when they're, you know what I mean? Like that needs to be a rule. I feel even if the kid is not on your team, you cannot talk to your coach for 24 hours. If there's a problem, a struggle, something that you're angry about, upset about that. I, dust I like has that. To I like that. Dust I um, and I often like I do personal fitness training. I pay to have somebody else train my kids because they need to be, I don't want to be their trainer, their mother, their therapist, their best friend, like, you know, the person who's teaching them how, like, you, they have to learn from other people. I say it takes a village, right? It takes a village yeah. to, you know, for people to lead your children. So my advice for that is assistant coaches giving the feedback, um, especially if it's something that they need to work on or, or if it's negative or if it's something that's like really strong, mm -hmm. I would make or that I would give that to the assistant coach after the 24 hours rule. If the father or mother, whoever's coaching needs to sit down and say, listen, you did the, the Oreo effect. You did this fantastic. You know, but the one thing that I learned today about your game is maybe we need to pr like pay a little bit more attention to your, you know, your swing or, you know, the way your whatever. So it's not what they did wrong. It's one thing that I noticed today that we can really work on together is, you know, it's word choices. You got to be mindful. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I am like, I'm, I'm a very tough love kind of mom. Mom. Like mm -hmm. I do give my kids tough feedback if they ask for it, mm -hmm. but I'm always like, what did you learn from it? Like, great. What went wrong today? What did you learn from it? Like, I want things to go wrong. That's how you grow. That's how you get better. You know, mm -hmm. I have a tool is 1% of your day. If there is one thing that keeps tripping you up in your performance, 1% of your day is 14 minutes and 24 seconds. Mm -hmm. I learned that from Brian King, one of my mental performance mastery certifications. 1% of your day is 14 minutes and 24 seconds. If something consistently is tripping you up during competition or practice, take 1% of your day for 28 days because it takes 28 days to change a habit or develop a new pattern or routine. Take one day off a week and work on that skill or that strategy or that tool in order to improve that area of your game. And by the end of the 28 days, measure your growth. Measure your growth. I, I wonder. So, I, I'm sorry. I wonder how many people that are do that do what you do mm -hmm. actually have an exercise science background. I don't know. Is that com you think that's common? Exercise. I have exercise science behind it only because of my history but of being. I, I, really I know, but but I, I wonder how many people that do what you do on mental on mental performance actually. <laughs> A lot. You, th I don't know. you think that's common? I mean, I'm, 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 I'm just curious. I don't know. I'm asking. I don't, no. You don't. You don't I know. Don't. Or you, you don't think it's common, do you? Mm -mm. I think it should be. No. I think. I think it should. Be. I think you you need to be able to understand the physical part. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Because if you, I, I think that if you separate the physical plane from the mental plane, that's where we get in trouble. 
Yes. Like a big part of the reason why I'm pretty good at what I do mm-hmm. is because, and I named my company Complete Game for that reason. It's because mm-hmm. I wanted to I be able thought- to deal with the, with the complete athlete. Mm-hmm in every area and every aspect of that player's development, specifically treating the athlete as a human, not mm-hmm. just an athlete and not just saying the swing, but there's the mind, there's the eyes, there's the fitness, there's the health, there's the nutrition, there's the recovery. Oh, there's your title, your theme. I love it. I love and, it. It's- and, and I'm just wondering because you're, you're going to have a perspective based on like where you're coming from. And, 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 and I, I'm, this is going to be an interesting, and I, obviously, I don't even know if we could even do what we would like to do in one podcast <laughs> because it's just so many layers to. Yeah, I'm going to give you an example of yeah. why I agree with you and think it's correct. Mm-hmm. For example, I have gymnasts or uh, cheerleaders that come to me with fear of tumbling backwards, right? Yeah. And I'll say to them, what What are you afraid of? What Just tell, help me understand what the fear and where the fear is coming from. I'll give you one example. The girl's like, I am afraid I'm going to land on my head. So I said, so what you're saying to me is you're afraid that your arms are not strong enough to hold your body weight up when you propel backwards into your back handspring, that you're going to land on your head and your arms are going to get out. Yes. I said, okay, here we go. Let's start this. Mm -hmm. We're going to work upper body in order to get your shoulders, your delts, your triceps, your biceps, and your chest. If this develops and becomes stronger, do you think your arms will hold your body weight up so you will not land on your head? Yes. Great. Let's get in my gym. So I show them five different exercises on how to develop their upper body so they will no longer be afraid of landing on their head. Boom. Breakthrough. And then we go into mental imagery. We go into a lot of different tools in order to get them there and for their body to feel like they can take action and be successful with that level of certainty that they're not going to land on their head. So yes, do I think exercise science should be piggybacked with mental performance training? Do I think it has to? No. Do I think it really makes you complete? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. So, so baseball, baseball and softball are are two unique sports. Mm -hmm. Um, And baseball was introduced to me at a very young age. I fell in love with the game and I was I was just fortunate enough to be around really smart people my whole life and and at every level that mm-hmm. really knew how to teach the game the right way yeah. everybody's not not always fortunate enough to and I, so I, I'm, I'm grateful for that um, you're blessed yeah I, I definitely I definitely and um the one thing about baseball and softball is that which, which is different than the other sports. Because if, if I'm a football player and I'm out mm-hmm. there not playing well in the first quarter, mm-hmm. the coach can take me off the field and put me on the bench for till the second half and I can come back in. Same right. thing in basketball, same thing in a lot of other sports. You can come off the field and go back in mm-hmm. to get yourself together. And, yes. and, and to some extent, in softball, you could, they could probably bench you somewhere halfway in the game. I mean, I, I've done it to kids. Hey, go sit down. You're done. You're not yep. here today. <laughs> you know, but... but for the, for if, yeah. you, if you make an error in, in center field, yeah, you're out there. I can't mm-hmm. call time out and like mm-hmm. make a change. I'm not gonna make a change with my son. You're like everybody's looking at you. So yeah. the, the the public failure and the the level of humility that's necessary mm-hmm. to be able to like because another ball the ball will find you. Another ball's coming. You can you can count on that. Another yes. one's coming. <laughs> and we, yes. learning how to fail is something that a lot of people, uh, uh, we, I believe we call it failure recovery, mm-hmm. is something that um, for me, it, it's, 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 meant, it's necessary. Like, I That's encourage true. you to learn to fail and, and embrace the failure because mm-hmm. it's going to happen and you have to learn how to get ready for the next opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and for that, you know, when we talk self-talk and things like that, and these are just like tools, like I'm big on self-talk. Oh, I, I, yes. I, think, I think a lot of athletes are very negative in their self-talk. Mm. Mm, yes. And um, it, it, it's very, you know, and I, I'm, I'm not in their head, so I, I don't know the extent mm-hmm. of how some athletes are beating themselves up. Mm-hmm. But I know it comes from somewhere, obviously. So what are some of the... Um, 
you know, in your in your walk and your travels and your expertise mm -hmm. and your experience. Yes. Why why are people so and, and the female athletes are even more negative than the guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They beat themselves up even more. What is that? And what, what's your comment up on that? Um, first of all, when they do come in with a lot of that like negative self-talk, the first thing I say to them, and I make a joke out of it because this is how I try to connect with the kids. I'm like, damn, you need to absolutely <laughs> need to, you know, start talking to you. <laughs> start talking to yourself more mm -hmm. and listening to yourself less. Those negative thoughts are going like have Ooh, has your negative thought ever helped you in any way? You know, don't miss that shot. Boom, you missed the shot. You know, like, so you need to start talking to yourself more and mm -hmm. listening to yourself, your negative thoughts a little bit less and start getting a little bit more accurate with the detanglement in your brain. You need to get a little bit more accurate. The other thing is I try to get the kids away from the judgment of the audience or the people watching. And I always refer back to, I'm a, I love this poem. It's by Theodore Roosevelt, Man in the Arena. Mm -hmm. And really, do you know the poem, The Man in the Arena? It circles back to your feedback and your judgment is not warranted unless you have stepped in the arena mm -hmm. and you have done the sweat, the blood, and you dust it off and you know what it feels like to, you know, fail and 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 try greatly. Like it's, it's so, I just totally did not do it justice at all. But <laughs> I'll look it up. <laughs> It gets so pumped up, like my mm -hmm. words get all fumbled, but mm -hmm. it's a great poem. So I say to them, get the feedback from somebody who's been there, who understands what it feels like to be successful and to also fail. The person sitting in the stand who has never played a sport before, their judgment and their opinions do not matter. They don't, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But you need to find people who are going to give you that feedback in order for you to be okay with failure, because that's how you're going to grow as an athlete. Mm -hmm. That's how you're going to grow as an athlete. And then I remind them, that's a rear view mirror moment right there. You can't undo a play. You can't undo it. It's a rear view mirror moment. It's in the past. How are you now going to reset yourself in order to be okay for the next opportunity or the next play? But so Jen, I develop yeah. But Jen, the reality is. What? And I have a lot of, of my young female athletes that are playing at these. They're playing for some of these, some of these kids are playing for teams that wannabe emphasis on wannabe like they're they're wannabes because they had little these teams are wannabe teams mm -hmm. that and what do they want to be they want to be elite and these players obviously want to be on a team that's that's good they want to be able to say look i play for a good team and right. the team that i play for you know we we travel we get on airplanes Mm -hmm. We stay in hotels and we rent cars and we, you know, eat at restaurants in all, all different parts of the country. And we play yeah. against teams from all over the country. And mm -hmm. that's what that's that's what I want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And they don't have that. If, if I go 0 for 2, I may sit the next two games. I don't right. get that time to try to figure it out and have that opportunity to learn from my failure. Because if I fail, I'm out. Mm -hmm. And and for and sometimes, and and I try to. I I, I see both sides of it, mm -hmm. from a, from a coach making the lineups perspective. Yep. And then I see the other side of it. That athlete needs about five, six, seven at bats, mm -hmm. to figure some things out. Yeah. Because if they're playing like, oh my God, if I if I if I if I make it out, I'm done. It's hard right. to play. It's hard to. It's hard to. Um, to play that way if, if I'm not given that opportunity to to to, to yeah. go through a process I, of failure. You know what I mean? So I, like yes. go ahead. I'm listening. That thought going up to bat right there that you just said with the like the, you know, audience can't hear it because you had the bat on your shoulder like that. Mm -hmm. Like if I fail right now, I'm gonna be out. Those are my overthinkers. My overthinkers, I have to dumb that down and keep it simple. One, two, three. Breathe, wait for my pitch, connect the ball with the bat. You have, we have to simplify it because mm -hmm. if everything has to be broken down and there's got to be a little tool or a strategy for those overthinking moments, because a lot of times mm -hmm. the things that you're saying to yourself are the reasons why you're striking out. You're not connecting. And, and you're right. You're saying and you're right. Cause it's not, it's not about the strike it out. It's not about the failure. I know that I'm going to fail. 
because it's a right. game of failure. But my coach is going to take me out. I'm not going to be. I'm not, it's not that I'm going to be out. I'm going to be out of the yeah. game. Is what I'm saying. And out of the well, next two for, games. So so yeah. and, and for us and, and let me just let me just say this. And for us as mature adults who know yeah. that's easy for us to say, but yeah. we're not 14. Mm-hmm. And you know, oh my God! If if I if I don't get it done, mm-hmm. I'll be back on the bench. Here's my here's right. my one opportunity that I'm probably going to get the whole weekend. Like, so you know what I'm saying? That's I, a different. That's a different. So what I'm saying is like that's 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 the culture of the game in some yeah. programs. Those want to be pro, like I'm talking about, right? Then you have programs yeah. where it's like, hey, you ain't coming out. Get out there, make mistakes, yeah. make some errors, learn. Yep. Get some experience mm-hmm. because you're yeah. 14. Why am I treating this like it's the MLB? Even the MLB, those guys go over 30. Yeah. And they're millionaires. Yeah. But yet, we don't even give 14-year-old girls the grace. And we right. don't have the patience yeah. to allow them to grow and develop mentally and emotionally and build their confidence. It's, mm-hmm. a pro- it's not the player's problem. It's not the player's fault. It's the no. game's fault. It's the culture's fault because of the pressure the unmerited pressure, the, the, the it's, it's a false sense of pressure. And it's a mm-hmm. false sense of eliteness. That, that's elite. I, 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 am, I, am I developing when I'm 14 or do I have to like already have it figured out when I'm 14? Like, what is that? Yeah. I honestly, Rob, mm-hmm. I'm like jumping in my seat. I, honestly, the <laughs> problem there is that they're focusing on the wrong things. So when you're focusing on the things that you can control, you feel like you're more in control. You're going to be more successful. Mm-hmm. If you're focusing on don't strike out, my, my coach is going to pull me out, you know, don't do bad or what the heck is wrong with me today or I'm never going to play again. I'm going to be on the bet. You're focusing on the wrong things. When you're focusing on your body language, getting it big, this ball's going for a ride. I can't wait to hear the crack of that bat. You know, I can't wait. Okay. How dare you Okay, 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 okay. Now, so, now, now you're talking. Now you're talking, coach. But now, wait, wait. You're talking. That's you talking. That's that's yeah. that's your personality. This kid over right. here is. That's a lot of work. That 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 kid needs to do. When they come into my studio, yep. I give them an acronym yep. for everything that's inside of their mm-hmm. control. And I'm always saying to them, are you focusing on the things you can't control? I'm not going to give all my secrets out, but like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, you right, know, right, you, right. All of the things that you can control. So are you focusing on anything outside of your control? Yes, you are. You You're are. focusing on time. You're focusing on your coaches. You're focusing on expectations. You're focusing on the negative self-talk. You're focusing on, you know, what other people are thinking and all of that. So when I'm like, okay, all this stuff over here, that's exhausting. That's confidence crushing. That is not empowering. You need to be focusing on the things that are within your control that you can tangibly do something about. And that's your present moment focus. And that's you talking yourself up, not down. And that's you going in there with energy saying, go ahead, pitcher. Give me what you got. Because this ball. Let me just say something right now. I feel like I want to go play right now. <laughs> you get me fired up. And, I, and so, so here's the problem. The problem is that. That's the problem. Why what? do I got to freaking fire you up? Why don't you have, why don't you have the, an, an innate ability yeah. to, to these tap players? into the IDGF. I call it the IDGF mode. Yeah, well, like look, because you're worried about this 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 guy who's making the lineup. Yep. Who wants to be able to puff his chest out and say, "Look, I won a game." Yeah. At the detriment of your own self esteem, but yet you're in control of it. But you just need more love. You need more guidance. You need more. You need more to be built up more, because you don't know you don't know how to get it from yourself. Where that girl mm-hmm. who's bats third, she's thriving on that. She mm-hmm. wants people to doubt her so she can prove them wrong. She has a whole different maybe, mentality. Well, either that or maybe she's doing a little bit more in private that people don't know about. Maybe she's, you know, tapping into that mental game or maybe she's got somebody in her life that is telling her no matter what's going on, you are enough. And no matter what's going on, softball is the sport that you play. It's not who you are as a person. You're so much more than the sport that you play. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe it's her environment. It's maybe it's maybe it's her parents, you know, mm-hmm. really being there for her on a different level. Or maybe she's just a badass. Or maybe she's just a badass and she wants to. That's it. And sometimes that's it. Sometimes she's just. She's just a badass. Personality. Yeah. And she's, she, she, she's a competitor. 
Yeah. But she she refuses to lose. She's mm-hmm. not gonna make excuses. And I and I don't exactly. know and, and I and I think when I identify, I like I know it's gonna take work because I have I have to I live in Westchester County. Right? Yeah. I got a lot of people that I'm training that are coming from an affluent situation. Okay. And a lot of people that are coming from affluent situations mm-hmm. are usually, usually mm-hmm. coddled more. College born? Coddled. They're coddled. Oh, more. Yes. They're yep. coddled more. Yep. That, so I'm, I'm working to try to get, create mental toughness and grit mm-hmm. with people who never had to be mentally tough mm-hmm. or never had to go through adversity their whole life. Mm-hmm. They get coddled in school. They get coddled at home. And yep. then they go. Then they go on the softball field, and you wonder why they take pitches down the middle two and zero. Oh. Yep. You wonder why they're taking pitches down on, on down the middle three and one. Because you it's it's their environment has created that means that mindset. Like, but I have a You're getting but I ha, but I have a famous hitting coach. I should be hitting. No, I I'm not the reason why you hit or don't hit. Yep. You were hitting. You were hitting when I met you. Most of them, or you weren't. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Honestly, I think yeah. it's the sting of life. It's the sting of life that has to sting you, right? And can I curse? It right. It's, <laughs> it's got to sting you in the ass for you to know yeah. what it feels like, yeah. to know those moments of adversity and success. Like you have to. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It can't. It can't be easy. I say this all the time. Life is hard. Choose your hard. Hard work and putting it in every day, working on your process and how you're going to prepare to compete. That, yeah, that's hard. But striking out three times in a row, that's harder. Choose your hard. Mm-hmm. They're both hard. You know, life's hard. So you have to figure I, out. I, which yeah, I know it's hard, but it's not hard if it's not. If no one allowed it to yeah. be for you. <laughs> well, I mean, and, then all, and then all of a sudden the game is hard. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. That pitch was freaking good. Yeah. <laughs> She's good. Yeah. Now what? Now you get <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying? Are you going to compete right now? She's yep. freaking good. Are you going to compete? She has 12 strikeouts. It's the fourth inning. Mhm. What are you going to do? They got They got to sit in <laughs> uh, what would I do? I would have them sitting in there using like some like mental imagery, like seeing themselves connect. You know, or the tool probably for that would be is you probably need to start pitching against faster pitchers so you get more conditioned and used to it. Mm -hmm. So practice time, turn off the dial a little bit with the pitching speed in order for them to be conditioned a little bit more during practice, um, you know, when you're going to be up against those fast pitchers. They're just not used to it. So let me say this. They're Um, near Rob. They're too. They have to fail at that fast pitcher to have the awareness that that is a weakness for them. They have to fail. I, I agree. I agree. I, I just, I just, and, and I got one more, one more thing that I was, I was thinking about, but, but I want to ask you. Oh, sorry. Um, Go no, you're good. You're good. So, individual team sports. Yes. I'm sorry. Softball and baseball are individual team sports. Mm-hmm. Because you're a team, but then you have that one on one between pitcher and, and hitter. So yes. that, that's that one-on-one, and it becomes an individual sport at that, at that time, right? At that particular mm-hmm. time. Yes. But in the pe- athletes who play individual sports and athletes who play team sports, mm-hmm. you know where I'm going right now. It's, it's different. But in softball and baseball, <laughs> but in softball and baseball, I'm throwing you some alley-oops right now. <laughs> in softball and baseball, it, we, we, got, we, get, we get both. And then I think that's the thing, like, the swing is such a personal thing. Mm-hmm. And for someone to allow me to help them with their swing, mm-hmm. I don't take it lightly because mm-hmm. that's a personal, you can't just let everybody mess with your swing. Right. It's like, what are you doing in my, it's like, what are you doing in my kitchen if I'm a chef? Like, who's, 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 who used my knives? Yep. Who's, yep. who's been cutting vegetables with my freaking knives? Yeah. Like, get out of my kitchen. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, that's, that's the swing. <laughs> It's personal. It's personal. It is. And um, the so here's here's a here's, here's you got emotion, right? Yes. So there's a there's a pitching coach who's a friend of mine. I, there's a friend of mine, really good friend of mine. She's a pitching coach who was who mm-hmm. was a Division One pitcher. Mm-hmm. Um, All American. 
fierce competitor. Love it. In terms of her personality and and, her, and she's that's her personality though. She's a competitor in life and everything she does, she's a competitor. Right. Um and she coached a pl- she coached a player who she recruited to her when she was a co- as a college coach who was okay. the number one recruited pitcher in, in the country. This player gets to the university mm-hmm. and can't do it. Can't do it. Mm-hmm. When you meet this player, and you know you can look at somebody when they walk in a room and you could be like, okay, that kid's different. Just yeah. by the way they walk, their body language, yeah. yep. their posture in the room, their comp- they have an air of confidence, they got a swag. Like, Love it. who's that? Yes. Right? Yes. And then another player could be like, okay, she doesn't even, she doesn't even look like she's an athlete. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, just not. And for people who are listening by audio, I just slumped my body over. I hunch, yep. I, I, shrunk, I hunch my shoulders. I'm looking down. Yep. I'm looking like I have no confidence, no swag. So um, this this player was the kind of player who would give up a home run mm-hmm. and then walk the next batter. Mm-hmm. Inconsistent. But she's walking the next batter because of the home run. But the pitching coach that I'm talking about who coached her couldn't understand because she was the kind of player that if she gave up a home run, mm-hmm. she's going to strike out the next batter. Mm-hmm. She's got the same emotion. Mm-hmm. They're both pissed, but one channels it to fuel the next two strikeouts I'm going to get. Right. And the other one channels it in a different direction, which is the reason mm-hmm. why she's walking people because of the home run. Like, you get it? So she, she could not, it was, she was, those, that player wasn't relatable because that player's mental game mm-hmm. wasn't tapped into up, up, to, up, to, up to where it needed to be. And yeah. she just, and this kid just needed to, quite frankly, she just needed to get her swag back. Yeah. She needed some opportunities where she could build mm-hmm. up her confidence and kind of get into get into some kind of a of a flow, if yes. you know what I mean. So and I'm, I'm finding a lot of that. Like I'm trying to get players to get fired up mm-hmm. because I want you to be, I want you to compete, and mm-hmm. you, and because you just struck out your first at bat is the mm-hmm. reason why you should hit a, you should hit it hard the next at bat, right? Not strike out again. Right. So those are things that, that, that those are those things where the emotion mm-hmm. can mm-hmm. go either way. It can Absolutely. take you either way. You know what I mean? <clears throat> the, uh, yes, I do know what you mean, mm-hmm. and that I think is all a matter of the mental game for yep. sure. Someone mm-hmm. who's more mentally aware, somebody who's not, somebody yep. who is acting differently than the way that they feel. Mm-hmm. The one that you know, just gave up the home run, and she's you know she probably is inside pissed, but that fired her up differently. Mm-hmm. You know, I, um, that's a whole unit. Like I call it emotional control, emotional arousal control. Hmm. What does it feel like? What does it look like? What does it feel like in your body when you're starting to lose emotional control? What yeah. does it look like? I'll show them pictures and then, you know, walk them through that. And then I'll get them in my gym and, and do a different activity. So they feel the heaviness of what's going on to them mentally and physically. How do we release that? How do we get you back into flow? Mm -hmm. And that's a one, two, three release system process that I use for them too. They need to know what it feels like, looks like, and they need to have the awareness that I am not in, you know, I am not at my best right now. Mm -hmm. And boom, this is the tool that I need to use right now to mentally reset myself because nothing pretty is going to happen if I don't. You know, this game is going to, it's how I finish this game that's most important. Mm -hmm. You know, that run that's a rear view mirror moment i can't undo that play but Mm -hmm. what i can do is come back stronger and you have to ask yourself at that moment like truly what's important right now Mm -hmm. like what matters most right now new batter zero zero new game i gotta i gotta release that got it and like Mm -hmm. yeah release your breath Mm -hmm. there and and go into that release system that i go over with my pitch there i have a different release system for pitchers for batters for fielders for goalies for you know i have all different tools that i use for them Mm -hmm. depending on their position but i do believe it circles back to focusing on the things that you can control Mm -hmm. and i believe it focuses back to just having the awareness of what's going on and boom i know exactly what this feels like you know, Jenny and I have walked through this this strategy before. I've been here before. 
I know that I need to reset myself here because it's not hmm. going to look pretty if I don't. Hmm. <clears throat> um, and I know we started out, you were going to give me the top top three things. <laughs> and we, you, 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 you got uh, the top three uh, things of that people one? struggle with, things that people athletes struggle with. Oh, okay. Right. I mean, we, we, you gave us one, you gave us awareness. And, and I, we, we, we definitely um, digressed in a good way, in a good way. But that one thing that we talked about gave us pretty much the whole podcast. Right. <laughs> we didn't have you to know. go to two and three. So I just want everybody in the audience to know that I, we didn't yeah. get to two and three. But nope. you see what one got us, right? So two, it would be a three-hour podcast. If we go to all three, it would be a three-hour podcast. But I do want to end off with one question. Yes, sir. Um, oh, you're thinking hard. I'm thinking how I'm gonna how I want to word this. Yes. Because I know what I did. I know, you know, speaking anecdotally, like what I had to adjust. In my mm -hmm. approach to trainer to training my athletes post pandemic mm -hmm. post pandemic oh, yeah. and i know that um i don't think anybody i don't think any person on planet earth we went through this as a planet think about that absolutely Th this is not even an american thing this is not a new york new jersey thing like we mm -hmm. went we we human the human race yes went through this as a planet. Think about how big that is. I know. Scary. So I don't I don't think that anybody is the same mm -mm. on the other side of it. Right. A lot of adults have struggled. Mm hmm Um, so obviously children have struggled. A hundred percent. Um what are some of the things that you were able to see mm -hmm. coming out of the the, the pandemic mm -hmm. and how sports, and I, and I think sports helped some of our young people. Yeah. Uh, um, the, at least in my experience. Mm -hmm. Because it was like, oh, I get to go back to my sport. I have something to go back to. Is what I right. got, is what I got Wait. from it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but what, well, what, did you, what did you see? Yeah, on the mental end of it, why, right. why they were coming to me was mm -hmm. they sat around too long and the motivation mm -hmm. and the drive is very low. Mm -hmm. Confidence, because they've been out of the sport for a mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. They feel like they are not as good as they were because they mm -hmm. haven't done what they've been doing for such mm -hmm. a long period of time. Fear, you know, fear of failure, mm -hmm. fear of getting sick because it's not gone yet. I mean, people are still getting COVID. Like if I'm, you know, fear of getting sick and then, you know, dying, people lost family members, people lost, you know, their loved ones, you know, kids are going to be affected by that. Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, that level of certainty of safety and the level of, um, am I going to be okay? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's a big piece. Um, you know, fear is definitely one lacking confidence is another one mm -hmm. and lacking motivation and drive because they lost their process and they lost how they're preparing for their sport mm -hmm. yes, because they were yes. shut down yes yes yeah, so they weren't on the grind you know mm -hmm. they weren't doing all the things that they should be doing in order to be successful yeah so and motivations motivation's a little tricky to get them back up you know and and feel that fire back in them again because they shut it down for so long you know you know, it's um, crazy because um, a lot of my a lot of my college kids mm -hmm. who went back to school that fall, mm -hmm. and we were still there were still some restrictions. Yes. So these kids get to college, <clears throat> excuse me, for the first time mm -hmm. as freshmen, like college. Yes. Yeah, that was my and, daughter. Yeah. And, and the athletes had not only did they have restrictions, but mm -hmm. athletes had special restrictions. Mm -hmm. Because if you get sick and you get the whole team sick. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. It's a di it's a different type of beast. So they were essentially yep. on lockdown within a lockdown. Yep. And the teammates getting mad at them if they did get sick and they were exposed. It, it was, they it was a and, and yeah. they're like, this is college. Yeah. There's no parties. There's no fun. Like I'm, I'm locked. I'm trapped in my room. I'm yeah. cursed. I'm cursed for being an athlete right now. Like. 
Next I, podcast we do, let's get two athletes in here that did go through that, and let's get their perspective on it. I would love good. to hear. That'd be yeah, good. that's yeah. We'll two athletes in. But I will tell you, <laughs> you asked me that question, and I would say also anger. They were angry that hmm. they were shut down. They were angry that they were not hmm. able to be who they are, mm-hmm. and they were angry that like you know their life was on hold and they weren't able to to perform and and be at their best and and yeah. So you got a lot. I mean, COVID did a lot, a lot. Yeah. Um, but confidence, fear, you know, motivation and drive, and definitely emotional control, anger, disappointment. Mm-hmm. You got a lot of that. Yeah. I don't think there's anything that I didn't see really. It, was, it really did vary depending mm-hmm. on your personality, mm-hmm. but it's it, de- it definitely affected them on on every level. And I think the fact that they need to know that it's temporary. This is not forever. We're not always going to be going through this. This is temporary, and that you're not alone. You are not the only person experiencing this right now. Every other human being is going through the same thing you are Mm -hmm. it's how you react and how you respond to this moment Mm -hmm. that's what's either going to get you through it or shut you down so how you react and how you respond to this temporary moment of insanity really right (laughs) how you react respond to this because it was crazy you know and knowing that it's not forever you know and you're not the only one going through it so that would be, you know, that little piece to them that you're not alone, you know? Yeah, true, true. So too- now, <laughs> this is so good. We, we could talk forever, but we, we can't. I know. <laughs> we can't. But what I, yeah. I, what I want to do is I, I want to I wanna end with you mm-hmm. um, telling my audience directly. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I'll also post it in the show notes. Sure. For those of them that are somebody maybe driving or maybe working out, listening to this, and they can't write it down, but I'll post it in the show notes. Um, how do they get in touch with you? Like, how, how does how do my listeners get it? They want to get a hold of you for whatever reason. Yeah, so um, I have a yep, I have a website. Mm-hmm. Um, it's as easy as it is. Mental performance training by Jennifer dot com. That's actually in the works of being redone. It's a little basic right now, but that's okay. Um, I don't have to be fancy in order to be effective. That's what I always say. That's true. Um, yep. I have my email address, which is um, sportscounseling.dojets at gmail.com. And I have my Facebook um, business page. I will give you that as well. And my Instagram page, which is Dujet Sports Counseling. Um, and my phone number, 973-713-7167. Give me a shout and I'll help you out. Oh, I rhymed. That was awesome. That was, that was. You rhymed. You should be a rapper. <laughs> Uh, so final words yes anything you want anything you want to say final words um final words for you um i would just tell every athlete out there that your goal in life is to just be a little bit better tomorrow than where you are today you know and life is a process nobody at the age of 15 16 17 18 year old is perfect um, and it's okay. You don't have to be perfect today. Your goal is just to be a little bit better tomorrow than where you are today. And um, be okay with not being okay all the time. It's all good. It's all good. It's how you grow. What all was right. that? That's the bell. That's the thing. You get a ding for that oh, one. That was a good one. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me today. I had a blast chatting with you. You're so I, fun. I am so grateful for you. That you, I'm glad that we know each other, and I'm glad that we're gonna. And I'm excited about what we're gonna be doing. We got some stuff coming. Just so y'all know, we got some stuff getting ready to pop off. Um, that's uh, you guys are all going to enjoy and, and benefit from, both players, um, coaches out there, and parents, mm-hmm. um, because we cannot take for granted that everybody mm-hmm. is operating you know, cerebrally, mentally, and emotionally, yeah. and, and things the way that we think they could. And people, people go through stuff. We're humans, but people are people. And we have Absolutely. to deal, we have to deal with us ourselves as humans first, I think, and treat the athletes like humans who happen to play a sport. Not like, they're just athletes, they're just machines. They should, they should not, they're not allowed to have problems and mental issues and, and things going on. So many people have things going on, you would be shocked mm-hmm. to know that they were going through this while they did this. Right. Exactly. And and these are children. I know. And maybe They're just the simple question is, is everything okay? 
you're not, you don't seem to be performing like, you know, how you were last month. Can I help in some way? You know, is, is something getting you down? Is there a problem going on in your personal life? It all affects it, you know, and just, I think just letting people know that you care, you know, and, and that they're not alone and that, you know, just extend, you know, have compassion, you know, contribute to your team. I tell my athletes all the time when they leave my sessions, teach somebody this teach somebody this tool on your team you know share what you've learned spread it out there i can only do one athlete at a time i wish i could do it for all of them you know but like share this mm -hmm. share some of these tools so other people feel better yeah. you know progress equals happiness <clears throat> when you're mm -hmm. in your sport that's when you feel most confident share that with somebody else that's great that is but. great What's up, everybody? This is Rob Cruz, and I'm gonna let you know how you can get 15% off any purchases you make at diamondkinetics.com. Whether it's the DK Swing Tracker for baseball or softball, or the DK Pitch Tracker for baseball or softball, you will get 15% off by using the promo code Rob Cruz. That's R-O-B-C-R-E-W-S at checkout. Check out diamondkinetics.com and get your 15% off today.